Hey guys, in this tutorial I'll show you how you can create a floating island in Adobe After Effects with a little help from Photoshop. This tutorial is going to have two main parts. First we'll create the floating island and in the second part we'll do the animation and compositing. So let's get started. First let's see what we need. If you take a closer look at floating islands, they all kinda look like an upside down mountain. So I started searching for a bunch of mountain images that could be used for this as well as some cliff images that could be used for the upper part. Then we also need the background shot or environment where we want to place the floating island. So I chose this lake shot. A great resource of all these assets and much more is Envato Elements. Envato Elements is a tool every filmmaker will appreciate. You can find there thousands of creative assets and templates for any kind of project you're working on. They offer great stock footage, including green screen clips like fog, fire, lightning, and literally anything you'll need. Apart from that, this library also includes awesome After Effects and Premiere Pro templates, VFX assets, intros, transitions, motion graphics, as well as sound effects and music. It allows you to download unlimited amount of all these assets just for a single price and you can cancel it anytime. Envato Elements is a huge time saver and helps you create videos faster. Make sure to check it out, there is a link in the description down below. Now let's start editing. I decided to create a floating island in Photoshop. You could also do something like this in After Effects, but it's just way easier and more convenient in Photoshop. I rotated the mountain image and created a mask. Then I used the Puppet Warp to slightly change the shape of the mountain. I also blended in some other parts of mountains to get some more structure. Next I worked on the upper part of the island, which again consists of some mountains and a cliff image. Finally I added in some plants, and this tiny house. Now we can open up After Effects. I placed the background video on the timeline and brought in the Photoshop file. To place the island somewhere above the lake, we first need to do a camera track. So select the video and in the tracker panel click Track Camera. Let After Effects do its business then choose a track point and create a solid and camera. Next, make the floating island layer 3D. Now we can copy the position of the track solid and paste it onto the floating island. Then adjust the scale. If you see some problems, you can also manually animate the position. I also used a null object for additional adjustments, but you don't need to do that. As our next step, let's create a reflection in the water. If you take a look at some images of water reflections, you can see that the reflection is basically just a flipped mirror image of the object. So duplicate the floating island layer and move the anchor point to the bottom. Then rotate it 180 degrees on the x-axis and adjust the position. Next we need to bring some of the water reflections on top of what is supposed to be our island reflection. So duplicate the original video and move it above the island layer. Then use the extract effect to isolate just the water reflections. You might also need to create a mask. Furthermore, we need to add some distortion to the reflection. For this, I'm going to use the displacement map effect. But first, we need to create a displacement map. Duplicate the background video and let's call it displacement map. Add the tint effect and levels effect to this layer. What the displacement map does is that it uses the dark and bright spots for displacement and ignores all of the areas that are gray. Then you can disable the visibility of this layer since it's just going to serve as a source for the displacement map effect. 
But before we apply the effect to the reflection layer, we need to pre-compose it because this effect depends on the layer size. Also duplicate the camera and pre-compose it together with the reflection layer to avoid scaling issues. Now you can see that the size of these layers is matched. Next apply the displacement map effect to the reflection layer, choose the displacement map layer, and for the displacement select luminance. And then you can play around with these values. Maybe even duplicate the effect. Additionally, you can use the curves effect to adjust the brightness and reduce the opacity. I also created a mask to make the reflection fade away a bit. I set it to subtract and feathered it out a bunch. And now we have a cool reflection in the water. Now let's make the floating island blend a bit better with the environment. First I added a bit of noise. Then I duplicated the background video and moved it to the top of the timeline. We'll use this as a color blend. Let's decrease the opacity and set the blending mode to overlay. So we get this. But we want only the island to be affected by this color blend layer. To achieve this, search for the set matte effect and apply it to the color blend layer. However, before we can use the island as our matte, we need to pre-compose it. Again with the camera. Now in the set matte effect, select the island precomp. Then adjust the opacity, or you can also try different blending modes. Next we can create a new adjustment layer and do a quick color grade with a curves effect. To make this look more realistic, we can add some fog. I used a simple white solid with a mask and applied the rough and edges effect to it and fast blur as well. To get some movement, I simply animated the evolution using a simple expression. Hold Alt and click the stopwatch icon. Then type in time times, let's say, 80. Then just turn it into a 3D layer. And again, you can use the position of the track solid. Next, play around with the opacity and create some duplications. I also added in some cloud images. Additionally, I went back to the floating island comp and added in these green screenshots. As a final touch, I put these birds in the sky flying above the floating island. By the way, you can find some great green screen birds on Envato Elements. And finally, to make this even more cinematic, you can use a wider aspect ratio and top it all off with a vignette and final color grading. And we are done. If you found this helpful, please consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next video.